A woe. A woe, Henry. Did you wet the bed this morning? So did I. So did I. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my face. Today, we're going to be venturing back a little bit further back in time than we normally do. We're going to be talking about the bizarre tale of Stuart Little, a movie about a family who adopts a mouse from an orphanage. No, not from a pet store, from an orphanage. How dare you? Are you implying that a mouse is not the same level as a human? Well, of course he's implying that, fool, because it's true. I am a doctor, after all. Oh, right, you're a doctor. Then I'm stupid. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, uh, Stuart... He's a person! He's a mouse! He is, in fact, not a mouse. I would know, because you're I... You're a doctor. <clears throat> we get it. We all understand that part, okay? Well, at least I'm not stupid. I wonder how many times you guys are going to come into my house, break in, interrupt my video, before I start calling the cops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, slow down. I think the funny thing is you think it's a choice whether or not we stay around. It's not your choice. Stuart Little is a bizarre tale about a relationship of a family of humans who take Stuart in as a person and not as a mouse. And obviously as a child, I never really realized how strange this really is. And I would also like to mention that this is based on a book, but the funny part about this is that the movie literally has nothing in common with the book except a few characters. Apparently they just took the title and then a couple characters and kind of just ran with their own story with the movie. And that makes a lot more sense, honestly. Because the movie just has so many things that just don't make sense to me. And I will admit, though, this is definitely one of those feel-good movies I would watch a lot when I was a little kid. You know, seeing Stuart win the boat race back then, you know, it was pretty freaking pog, you know? But after watching it as an adult, there is just so much in this movie that is just confusing. Uh, so many plot holes, so many things that just don't really add up or really make much sense. And that's what we're gonna be talking about, baby. So make sure to grab some popcorn, grab some G Fuel, use code PIG to get 30% off your order, and let's get into this bad boy. But seriously though, go. Go get yourself some G Fuel. So the movie starts out with George Little running out of his room saying, it's today. He's super excited. What is he excited about? Apparently today is the day that his family is going to go get him a little brother. And after rewatching this, this movie gives me a lot of like Doctor Who type vibes where the universe is kind of weird. And also at the same time, kind of gives you Home Alone vibes. Like the music's kind of similar. It has a lot of the same vibes to it. So Dr. House and Eleanor Little go to the orphanage and talk to this lady about, you know, picking out a kid, basically. And I don't really know how this works when it comes to, like, orphanages and stuff like that, but they kind of just walk in. There's just a bunch of children running around, and they kind of just, like, have to pick one. It's like, oh, I want that one. That one looks good. Quite strong. He could do a backflip. I want that. I want that kid. So they sit down, they're looking around, and they're thinking, how are we supposed to choose between all of these children? And then all of a sudden, a mouse starts talking. Michael J. Fox, voicing Stuart Little, reading a book called Little Woman. Is, 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 he reading, is he reading mouse porn? But this is where the bizarre kind of comes in, because the parents don't react once. They don't say, oh, it's a talking mouse. No. Nothing. They're literally just acting like a mouse in an orphanage that talks is just normal. And the reason this doesn't make sense in this universe is no other animals talk to human. No other animals are considered people. Every animal other than Stuart are normal, except Stuart. But it's just never talked about. No one reacts to it. And just a little side note, I want to mention Stuart's character design is pretty good. Like the little cute little clothes he's got. Like, I mean, honestly, for its time, because this was 1999. So for its time, like the design of the character and the CG is very well done, honestly. So Stuart starts talking to the littles and he's like, yo, this kid can do this. That kid can do that. Basically like running down what all of these different kids can do and who they should pick. And it's funny because how the orphanage lady refers to Stuart is he has um uniqueness not hey it's a mouse why is he not in a pet shop 
You know, every other animal in this universe is that I, 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 I don't get it. And not only that, but she goes on talking like this is still normal. Like this is just a normal thing for her to have a child in an orphanage that is not a human. It, but, but it's not. But it is, but it isn't. It's like sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. I'm never going to get over this. So Stuart gets to the Littles house and then instantly gets gobbled up by Mr. Snow or Snowbell, who is going to be known throughout the movie. And Snowbell is a cat. A cat who is a pet who cannot talk to humans. I mean, sure, the cat can talk to Stuart, but he can't talk to humans. It doesn't make any sense. So George ends up getting home, and he's like super stoked. Where is my little brother? Where is he? Oh, dear God, he's a mouse. You, you know, that that's what a normal person would react to. But George just goes, No, really. <laughs> No one's gonna panic that he can talk ever. It's like at least add in a little bit. Like the universe does not line up here, baby. So it turns out the only character in the entire movie that talks about or even mentions about the fact that Stuart is a mouse living as a human is Snowbell the cat. Snowbell the cat goes up to Stuart while he's sleeping in a human sized bed and is like, bro, I'm sleeping on a rag in a corner. You're a mouse. All right, you understand? And then Stuart goes on to call Snowbell his pet. And obviously as a cat, that, that that ain't cool. It's very interesting that the cat's the only one who's a little bit, you know, thrown off by the whole situation. The next day, Stuart wakes up and we start seeing, you know, the issues of the fact that he is a mouse. Stuart ends up falling into the laundry basket and ends up getting put into the washer. And he basically almost drowns, you know, the first day of him living with his new family. I don't know, maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe he should live, you know, in a more safe environment. Another hilarious thing they do is they get a doctor to come over and check on Stuart. A doctor, not a vet, a doctor to come over and check on Stuart and to make sure he's okay after almost drowning. And then we get another little funny scene of them going to shop for clothes for Stuart at a doll store, you know, because he is a mouse. So then the Littles have a giant family party to celebrate Stuart's arrival. It still bothers me that that they're treating, like every, literally everyone. Everyone's treating it like it's normal. And it is interesting how they all bought gifts for like obviously a normal sized child. Like you would think the parents would be like, yo, before you buy gifts for my new kid, make sure you realize he is a mouse, not a human. But they, they failed to mention that. So that's just, so this, yeah. And then finally George starts spitting straight fast. He's like, yo, he's not my brother. He's a freaking mouse. Why is everyone around here acting like he's just a regular guy? He's a regular kid. He's a freaking mouse. Good job, George. George is a smart one in this family. So after that little fiasco goes on, Stuart's like, yo, I kind of want to figure out who my real parents are because, you know, like obviously Stuart realizes that he's not a human, I think. So the Littles end up going to the orphanage and start asking questions about the family. And while that's happening, we get a little bit of a situation with Stuart and Snowball. So Snowball apparently has outside alley cat friends and one of his alley cat friends comes inside and obviously, you know, an alley cat, he's not going to think, oh, this mouse is considered a human by these people. So then his alley cat friend starts laughing his ass off because, you know, a mouse with a pet cat is kind of ironic. And then Snowball chases Stuart down and then gets dunked on into the trash can. So while Stuart's getting chased, he winds up in the basement with George. And I just want to say, holy shit, George is literally the luckiest child ever. Like, look at this setup, dude. This is like a setup you see in freaking museums and like city built things like this train set all of this like western building model stuff like what child has this? This, this this kid's the luckiest kid ever so george and stewart have a little bit of a bonding session over this and then we see the boat that george and his dad were going to build for this boat race that they're going to be having i think in like a day or two so stewart decides to end up helping him finish off the boat snowball obviously being annoyed with stewart ends up going to the alley cat mafia that's basically the equivalent of what it is and asking for them to take care of Stuart, which I mean, literally anything can take care of Stuart. Like a falling broom, uh, just drop him out of a window, like anything. He's a mouse, all right? So another thing that's interesting I just want to mention is uh, in this universe, no one reacts to the talking mouse. No one. The universe is supposed to be normal, right? Everyone has pets. They look at them like animals. No other animal is talking except Stuart. And he's walking around at this public park event talking. And not only that, but George ends up trusting Stuart to carry this gigantic freaking 
remote control in order to, you know, control the boat. And he ends up dropping it and someone steps on it. That's your fault, George. You're an idiot. So as everything starts looking bleak, the remote control is completely broken. It looks like all hope is lost. Stuart Little ends up driving the remote control boat. How? How do you ask? How does a remote control boat have uh, regular uh, controls? Yeah, I'd... It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. But it doesn't matter because it's a movie and we're watching it. It's funny because in this race, there's like this big black red boat that just literally just rolls over everyone. Just like goes over and just just completely annihilates everyone's ship. And like no one's even reacting to that fact. They're just like, uh, yeah, whatever. You know, it's, it, it's technically cheating, but whatever. Honestly, as long as it causes conflict for the main character, cheating's okay. So Stuart ends up winning. Big question of the day. Is it considered cheating if you're using your pet mountain not no, not pet mouse, your brother mouse to control the ship instead of using your remote control. Is that cheating? I mean, it, I think so. But I find this part hilarious because Stuart won the boat race, like everyone just accepts him now. You know, George accepts him, the whole family accepts him. Everyone just, oh yeah, he is a part of the family now because he won the boat race. What if he lost? What if he never thought about getting on the boat to win? You just go back to normal, like no one cares. Just because he won a stupid boat race, everyone loves him now. But anyway, everyone celebrates them winning. They take a little uh, family portrait photo and all that nonsense. Oh yeah, yeah. And as everything starts looking up for Stuart and the family, some little two mice come knocking on the door and I guess Stuart isn't the only one who is a sentient mouse being who has the capabilities of most humans because it looks like his parents Stuart's actual parents come knocking at the door. So Stuart's real parents end up spinning the whole story. Oh, we couldn't afford to take care of you. We couldn't feed you, We, we but we got money now and we want you back. And obviously George isn't so happy about that. Neither is the Littles. They're a little bit sussy about the whole situation, but they reluctantly are like, okay, fine. You could take them whatever year as parents. And they drive away in a uh, remote controlled car. How exactly can a mouse drive a remote controlled car? You ask, there is no answer. There is no answer for a lot of this in the movie. And it looks like Stuart's family lives in a mini golf course castle, which is obviously a huge step down from his full-size mattress. So the next day comes around and then the orphanage person comes over and she's like, yo, you asked about his parents, so I dug up some information and apparently Stuart's parents died two years ago to a grocery shopping accident where a bunch of cans just collapse on their bodies and they just became mush. So yeah, those two parents that took Stuart away, weren't actually his parents. And this is where it just gets even more ridiculous in the movie. They hire an entire police investigation search and rescue mission with a bunch of cops to find a goddamn mouse. And it's funny because the detectives treat it like a normal person. They, they realize it's a mouse, but they still treat it like a normal person. So we cut back to Stuart and his parents, and then we kind of discover a little bit more of the truth. Apparently, Stuart's parents were hired or more like feared in to posing as Stuart's parents in order to bait him out of the house, which I just want to mention, holy Holy shit, the lengths the cats go to just to get the mouse away, like just freaking snatch him when he's walking outside. It was at freaking Central Park yesterday. Literally just get your cat gang and go snatch like it, ugh. It's so convoluted. So Stuart ends up realizing, hey, I actually am a little and that, you know, makes him happy. So Stuart takes the roadster, drives through Central Park to try to find his way back to the Little's house, ends up getting chased down by all of the cats, but ends up sneaking his way away from them by going into water because, you know, cats don't like water. And back at the little household, his entire family is making flyers and getting set up to go out for the night to go search for Stuart Little, and they all head out their separate ways to go find Stuart. And Stuart ends up finally making his way back to the house, but it looks like the only person there is Snowball, and Snowball kind of takes advantage of that situation and kind of makes it seem like the Littles never wanted him in the first place. And the picture that they used to put on the flyer was actually cut out of the family portrait, which again, that doesn't really make any sense. Like, just get a copy of the picture. Why would you just cut it out of the family portrait? I don't even understand that at all. But since his family cut out that little portrait, Snowball kind of used that as like saying, yo, 
See that? They did that right when you left. They didn't even care. They don't care about you at all. They're glad you're gone. So obviously Stuart being distraught and very sad that, you know, him thinking that his family never wanted him in the first place, he ends up walking out back into Central Park, you know, because he's a little sad, a little mousy boy. So all the littles end up getting back to the house as Stuart's leaving and George basically stays up as late as possible, holding the phone in his lap, waiting for someone to call. You know, even though three days ago, he couldn't give a shit about Stuart. Stuart. Like, what if Stuart didn't win the boat race, you know? Would he care? Would he care? Was the boat race really that important? So all the cats are running around Central Park looking for Stuart, but Snowbell ends up finding him first, and Snowbell, you know, feeling bad for what he did to Stuart, he ends up trying to save him. And not only that, but Snowbell feels so bad, he ends up telling Stuart the actual truth, that they all actually care for him, and he was just doing that because he was bitter. So all the cats end up saying, screw it, we're gonna end up killing both Snowbell and Stuart. So they end up getting out of there, all of the cats Cats end up falling into the water and then Snowbell and Stuart end up getting back to the house. And then George hears Stuart knock on the window. Everyone's happy, happy family, happy family with the, with the mouse as a brother and son. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the bizarre, ridiculous, weird movie that is Stuart Little. Like honestly, the movie as a whole, you know, it's a good kids movie. It's just, it just never really makes any sense. Nothing ever adds up. There's so many things that don't line up. It's very confusing how the logic and the universe works. But if you just don't have much of that thought process and you're just a little kid you know babbling pooping your pants pee in the bed like I do all the time it's a movie for you it's just one of those movies you know about how family comes first and all that nonsense so if you guys liked the video please subscribe please like the video all that stuff share it around you know share it around also if you like this shirt that I am wearing currently go to sadgirlapparel.com and get your apparel today. But thank you everyone for watching and I will see you around outside your house, peering in your window at night, wondering if you're subscribed to me. You're subscribed to me, right? You don't want me hanging around your house all the time, do you? Yeah, you, you wanna subscribe, don't you? Don't you? Bye. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views.